Has humanity ever come close to extinction? Modern humans have walked around on this earth for about 300,000 years, with our ancient ancestors walking around for long before that. The first human ancestors began to emerge anywhere between 5 to 7 million years ago, when the first ape-like creatures started walking on two legs. In other words, we've been around for a while, and that's a lot of time for humans to potentially go extinct. And guess what? We've had numerous close calls. From the earliest of our days on this earth to just about 60 years ago, humans have had a constant reminder that no matter how much it may seem like we rule this planet, we remain a fragile species. Today we're going to go over four separate potential extinction events that have impacted humans in the past, and discuss what events may be coming for us in the future. Before jumping in, I want to give a quick shout out to Duncan's Travels for this video idea. If you've got ideas for me, comment them down below. Now let's get into our first near extinction event, and travel back in time to around 1 million years ago. For our first near extinction event, we're going way back in time. Around 1 million years to be exact. Now, you might remember that I just said that modern humans didn't emerge until about 300,000 years ago, which is correct, but our early ancestors were walking the earth long before them. According to one study, genetic evidence suggests that around 1 million years ago, the effective population of early human species, such as Homo erectus, don't laugh at that name, was only about 18,500 individuals, which is very few. For reference, it's thought that us modern humans evolved from Homo erectus, hence why this is important. Per Scientific American, quote, the diminished genetic diversity one million years ago suggests human ancestors experienced a catastrophic event at that time as devastating as a purported supervolcano thought to have nearly annihilated humans 70,000 years ago. We'll talk about that supervolcano more in a minute, by the way. Basically, the study found that ancient human ancestors faced some extinction level event around one million years ago, but we don't exactly know what it was. It could have been a volcanic eruption, it could have been disease, it could have been something else entirely. But all we know is that something happened based on genetic evidence from around that time. While what may have happened remains a mystery, the impacts of this near extinction level event were monumental. Had Homo erectus gone completely extinct, modern humans would have never existed. Instead, it's possible that another ancient ancestor could have evolved into a group similar to modern humans, though different in other ways. But what do you think happened that caused this near extinction? Let me know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to our next event. About 70,000 years ago, Mount Toba in Sumatra experienced a super eruption, one of the largest volcanic eruptions in Earth's history. I've already actually talked about this briefly in my video about Yellowstone supervolcano, but let's take a deeper dive into it. When this supervolcano erupted, it expelled an estimated 670 cubic miles worth of ash and lava into the atmosphere, which is an absurd amount. For reference, Mount Vesuvius, the volcano that buried the ancient city of Pompeii, released around one cubic mile of ash. That gives you a sense of just how big the Mount Toba eruption was. The impact that Mount Toba had on the climate was drastic. It's hypothesized that this eruption released enough sulfur into the atmosphere to trigger a volcanic winter, a period of global cooling that could last decades. Because of this, some studies suggest that the human population on Earth around this time dropped to around 10,000 people, or maybe even fewer. However, those that remained were able to adapt and thrive. For example, ancient humans living around modern-day South Africa increasingly ate seafood as a way to survive. This could have been because the ocean was less impacted by the eruption. Regardless of that though, the Mount Toba super eruption had a massive impact on humans. Had humans not been able to adapt effectively, they would have gone extinct entirely, and the world as we know it today would not exist either. But we wouldn't be able to even comprehend that because we wouldn't exist either. Duh, that's kind of obvious. If you're curious, remnants of the Mount Toba eruption are still around today. If you go to Lake Toba on the Indonesian island of Sumatra, you can see the world's largest volcanic lake. Lake. Lake Toba covers 440 square miles and is over 1,600 feet deep in certain parts, and it only exists because of the Mount Toba super eruption. The lake is the crater that the eruption left behind, only now it's filled up with water. In other words, the crater left behind by the super eruption is absolutely massive, and given its impact on the earth, it's kind of a miracle that humans managed to survive this. But maybe we're just a resilient bunch. Who knows? This next near extinction definitely took its toll though. The 
The Black Death began in the mid-1300s, and it heavily impacted Europe and Asia. It was caused by the bubonic plague, which arrived in Europe in the year 1347, when ships carrying the disease docked at the Sicilian port of Messina. Most of the sailors on the ships were either dead or dying. The ships were ordered to quickly depart the harbor, but the Black Death was already there to stay. Over the next five years, the bubonic plague tore through Europe. Estimates on how many people in Europe died vary, with some sources placing the number between 20 to 50 million people or one-third to nearly 50% of the entire continent's population. By the end of its time, the bubonic plague killed up to 200 million people worldwide, making it the deadliest pandemic in history. The disease often moved fast. It typically killed a host within days of them first developing symptoms such as a high fever, the well-known rash, and buboes in the armpits and groin, which turned black and burst, expelling pus and bacteria. Pretty gross. It was a nasty, nasty thing, and it forever changed the course of human history. While it wasn't as close of an extinction call as other events in this video, it is one of the closest times humanity has ever come close to extinction due to disease, the other being the Plague of Justinian, which was also caused by the bubonic plague. It would have been terrifying to be alive while this was spreading. Families, towns, and cities were decimated. If the bubonic plague were a tiny bit deadlier, it could have changed history even more than it did. Who knows how that would have impacted something like the colonization of the Americas, or Europe's influence on the rest of the world in general. That's crazy to think about. Also, fun fact, this thing is still around today. A handful of cases arise yearly, both in the United States and around the world. Luckily, with modern antibiotics, it's far more treatable. However, while unlikely, there could be a future where a plague-causing bacteria becomes resistant to antibiotics and harder to treat. That's something to ponder. Maybe I'll do a video on something like that in the future. The Cold War was probably the closest humanity has ever been to extinction in the modern era, in my opinion at least. After the end of World War II, two new global superpowers emerged, the United States and the Soviet Union. Rising tensions between the two quickly led to the stockpiling of nuclear arms in both countries. After seeing the terrifying power of nuclear bombs when the US dropped two on Japan to end World War II, both countries wanted to ensure they would remain in control. Thus, the Cold War began. By 1960, the United States had stockpiled over 18,000 nuclear nuclear weapons, while the Soviets had just over 1,500. The Soviet Union wouldn't reach their peak of nuclear power until the mid-1980s, when they had an estimated 40,159 nuclear warheads ready to go. At that point, the United States had shrunk its arsenal down to just over 23,000 bombs. Yes, I said shrunk, because the US peaked at just over 30,000 nuclear weapons in the mid-1960s. That's all besides the point, though. The time I really want to focus on was the Cuban Missile Crisis, which occurred in October of 1960. It was probably the closest the United States and the Soviet Union came to a nuclear conflict during the Cold War. But what happened? Well, in July of 1962, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev reached a secret agreement with Cuban Premier Fidel Castro to place Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba. This was in response to the US's failed Bay of Pigs invasion, where the US failed to overthrow the Castro regime in Cuba. In September of 1962, the Kennedy administration became aware of nuclear missiles being built in Cuba by the Soviets. In other words, nuclear bombs were not knocking on America's doorstep. Kennedy, the president at the time, gathered his closest advisors to decide what to do about this. Some argued for airstrikes to destroy the missiles and then to invade Cuba again. Others said that stern warnings for Cuba and the Soviet Union would be enough. In the end, Kennedy opted for a naval blockade of Cuba, though they didn't call it a blockade for war reasons, and Kennedy then sent a letter to Khrushchev claiming they would not allow weapons to be delivered to Cuba. So yeah, tensions were extremely high, but guess what? They got even higher. I now want to zoom in on one particular Soviet submarine. Marine, B-59, that was patrolling international waters during this conflict. B-59 hadn't been in contact with their government in Moscow for a few days, as they were staying off radio channels to avoid detection. However, the United States Navy had found them anyway, and on October 27th, 1962, they started dropping depth charges into the water to force the submarine to surface and identify itself. The use of these charges in international waters made many on board the submarine wonder whether war had started between the United States and the Soviet Union. The captain of the submarine concluded that war had started and wanted to launch the nuclear torpedo that was on board. Luckily, safeguards were in place and three approvals were needed to launch it. The submarine's captain and political officer were in favor of launching the torpedo. Only one man, a Soviet naval officer named Vasily Arkhipov, opposed the launch. It was this opposition that prevented the Soviet submarine from launching a nuclear torpedo and starting nuclear war. Arkhipov didn't know it at the time, but he had just prevented a nuclear conflict single-handedly. Without his presence, it's possible that nuclear 
nuclear war could have started and the Cold War would have turned extremely hot. In other words, we were one approval away from the world looking completely different today. I'm not saying nuclear annihilation would have happened, but with that many bombs around, the United States might not even exist today. Vasily Arkhipov is a name that rarely gets thrown around, but in reality, he's one of the unsung heroes for the entire human race. If a different man had been on board that submarine, humanity as we know it could have been forever changed. If this video has taught you one thing, it's that humanity's existence on Earth is fragile. Any event could really happen at any given time that gives us a scare, though extinction level events are pretty rare. Anyways, looking toward the future, there are a myriad of things that could be the death of humanity. If we want to take the sci-fi route, we could look at AI, which is still in its infancy but is already making terrifying advancements. Weather-wise, we could go with climate change. Eventually, in the far future, Earth could become entirely uninhabitable because of runaway greenhouse gases. The threat of nuclear war always comes to mind as well when thinking about the end of humanity. The war in Ukraine continues on, the situation surrounding Israel and the rest of the Middle East has reached even higher tensions, and of course, China's eyes are set on Taiwan. All it takes is one mistake for something like this to spiral into a global and potentially nuclear conflict. But even if that does happen, us humans are a resilient species, and we've been through a lot already. I think it's important to keep in mind that there is so, so much that had to go right for all of us to be where we are today. If a different human died from the Toba supervolcano eruption, or if a different person caught the plague and died, it's possible that you wouldn't be here today. The butterfly effect is a very real thing when it comes to genetics and ancestry, and if one person in your bloodline died thousands of years ago, you wouldn't be here. I hope we can all try to keep that in mind. Anyways, that's all I've got for this hypothetical. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like and subscribe. More videos coming soon. All of my sources for this video are down in the description below. Feel free to check them out if you're interested. I highly recommend it as they shine some more light on points that I made throughout this video. Thank you so much for watching and for all your recent support. I really appreciate it. Hope I see you next time.